Everyone who's listening can hear. <laughs> oh, okay, so that everyone who's listening can hear what is being said and we have a clear record. As indicated on the agenda, public hearings will be heard for each application with applicants presenting their requests and responding to questions. After the public hearings have concluded, we will go into the regular meeting, which remains open for the public to, for listening, but no new testimony can be given and the board will deliberate among ourselves. Also, this meeting is being recorded and the recording will be passed on, posted onto the town's website. I'm not gonna ask, uh, well, before I do that, uh, before I ask Dylan to call the roll, just wanted to let you know, we have a quorum of four people tonight, which is what's required for uh, location approvals um, for this meeting. And we have two location approvals on the uh, agenda. So it should be a pretty quick meeting. We have, we go start with uh, new business and old business. So new business, we look, hear the applications in the order that they're received on the agenda. And after we hear the applications, we'll have question and answers. Um, and then we'll close the hearing on the application. And then when we go into the old business, we'll vote on the application. Just be reminded that we can't introduce any new information during the second portion of the meeting, during the old business portion of the meeting. If you have anything to say, say it during the hearing part of the application, during the new business part. Is that uh, clear or am I goofing anybody up? Okay, all right. So uh, I'm gonna ask Dylan, uh, a lot to take uh, the attendance by calling the roll. <clears throat> uh, Chairman Frank Lengia. Here. Honey Tubbs. Here. Corey Whiteside. Here. Ryan Zellick. Here. Ryan Matson. Hunter Mathena. Christine Mazad. You have a quorum. Okay. And this is for the uh, April 25th, 20, 2023 Town of Berlin Zoning Board of Appeals, 7 p.m. We're starting a little bit late. Um, the first app, the first application, uh, ZBA 2023-05, 1381 Berlin Turnpike, map 16-3, block 142, lot 54. Muhammad R. Adam. Adam Auto Sales is requesting a motor vehicle use location for approval for a used car dealer license for Berlin Zoning Regulations um, uh, 11R15 in the Berlin BT1 zone, Berlin Turnpike 1 zone. Property is owned by American Auto Specialists. Speaking for the application, the microphone's right here. Uh, good evening, members of the commission. Um, I represent Mohadam, Mohammed Adam and Adam Auto Sales Inc. The applicant, uh, is, the property has been owned by American Auto Specialists. It operated a, um, a used car dealership with repair for many, many years. I think it goes back to the 90s, at least. Uh, there's come time for them to sell it. Uh, my clients are interested, interested in purchasing it. They have no plans to change the physical layout in any way um, other than to, to clean it up. Um, in time, be nothing that would require a new uh, site plan. Any uh, other changes mm -hmm. might be interior. So I intend on uh, continuing the exact same use that's been there for uh, many, many years. I know in this type of an application, the zoning board's acting as an agent of the state rather than a ZBA, determine whether a certificate of approval is appropriate. State Procedures Act. Um, reviewing the application, they're obligated to make a determination irrespective of the permitted nature of the pro's use and whether a certificate of approval should be issued. We would ask that it be issued only because it's been there for so long. Um, it was approved, I guess, at one point in time. There's nothing really has changed with the operation that warranted it. Approved other than a change of ownership. Based on that, we'd ask that the application be granted. 
Thank you. Somebody going to clean up that yard? That's when I mentioned cleaning it up. And I said there'd be no changes. Our intention is obviously to change the name with the sign, also to clean it up. Um, there's cars, there's vehicles on that yard that probably been there since they opened in the 90s. Obviously, be a whole new operation with, um, you know, more aligned with repairing vehicles and selling uh, vehicles as opposed to just storing. Um, Mr. Mohammed Adam is here today if there are any questions. Yeah. The principles in the operation. Have um, Kristen, who has her hand raised over Zoom, she needs to ask a question. Hi, um, yep, Dylan, I'm just hoping that um, we can have him state his name for the record so I can get it for the minutes, please. Okay. Attorney Michael Berry, B-A-R-R-Y. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. This is a location approval. Um, it is a... Uh, uh, can that be made a requirement? Well, yeah, we can make, I mean, you know, they need to clean up that yard, that's for sure. I think we should put that in, a, in the approval. If we if we approve it, I think that should be one of one of the stipulations is that yard get cleaned up and make it more presentable to the public because it hasn't been for years. Okay. Any comments from uh, the people at the Zoom meeting? Brian, uh, Corey? I support the uh, stipulation. Yep, I'm, I'm good. Uh, any uh, comments in favor of the application? Any comments in opposition to the application? Got to come up here and speak and sign in. You got a sign in shoes there? My name is William Cassano. I live at 136 Middletown Road. I received a letter from Attorney Barry. I'm requesting, since they wish to come to uh, a better understanding of what's going to be going on at this property. Um, re recently, there was changes on the Berlin Turnpike um, with another establishment that is uh, kind of an eyesore for, from where I live and what I, what I look at. And it has to do with, uh, with lighting. And I'm concerned about what you might be doing to changes to clean it up. What kind of lighting are you going to put up there? What kind of signage are you going to put up there? And, and how is that going to affect my my property um, as a homeowner and the value value wise? Those are those are my concerns. Um, I don't know about the mobile station that I didn't get to speak upon, but uh, but it certainly is an eyesore. And recently had people come to my home and they look and they go, what's up with that? You know, it's like a neon sign out there that is uh, kind of uh, light pollution. You know? and that seems unnecessary. <coughs> not quite sure whether it's going to be a, just repairs or a, I understand you're going to sell, you know, used cars that you repair. I, I understand that. You know, I, I certainly want you to make a living, but I'm concerned with the more of the aesthetics and what that's going to look like um, at the, the homeowners like I said in that area so i i thought at first i thought it was the white house on the corner um but then when i checked the address i saw it was, it was my property but behind my property um south on the ground that's why i'm here this evening thank you thank you there are some other stipulations that you'll have on that property and they're not from us they'll be from the state of connecticut uh as far as parking cars close to the road 
um, you have to stay off their state right away. And that does not leave you a lot of room to display cars. Just to let you know, there's been other other establishments that have been approved, and we've had to we've had to uh, enforce that uh, stipulation along with the normal uh, motor vehicle. I believe it's a twenty or thirty foot buffer. Thirty foot. Can't remember what the exact. It's a good size buffer. Good size buffer, and there it doesn't leave enough. That doesn't leave a lot of room in front of the garage. Sure, fine. The whole pro, the whole thing. We, you know, don't we? We need a. We need a, a. A site plan for this. We need a parking spaces. We need all of that. We don't have it here. I knew something was wrong. I believe we have to have we have to know how many parking spaces they have for the bays they have, and then for customers and and for yeah, that's true for uh, employees. I don't see that, that. has to, and that's not on this. I address that. Um, in, in this type of application, it's just. It's for the state hearing. I understand that. We've done, we do several of these applications every year. There's been no change that would require a site plan application. I don't believe it's necessary. I believe we're here just because we're changing the ownership. Should they decide to do something in the future, expand it, change the lighting, change the existing parking, correct that a site plan approval they'd have to come back to. This time there's being no change to the existing use. Because of I, change, I, I, uh, I, uh, unfortunately, I disagree. Um, there's usually a site plan when this thing was approved back way back when that would have something on it. Once it's approved, which it was before, there's really being no change in what's been approved other than who the owners are. It still has to meet zoning requirements regulations i think the supreme court was clear it doesn't have to meet zoning regulations in this type of matter because the board's acting as an agency of the state well not as a zoning board i realize it's we in, in, in every other in every other uh on every other occasion when we've we've addressed this type of uh location approval we've had to have that uh, site plan approval, site, site plan with parking for both employees, customers, and um, yeah, employees and customers, I guess. Yeah, we have had that. We've had it on every single one we've done. Yeah, we, have. we just did one on on uh, Christian, on, uh, what is that road? Uh, the Chamberlain Highway. Just did one on the Chamberlain Highway recently, and we had that. Oh, yeah. Uh, next to uh, Magachi's. Yeah. Uh, well, again, it, it's the Wallace. There's nothing here, though. Because there's absolutely no change in what's out there from now, I don't believe the site plan would be necessary. I think it, I'm not familiar with the applicants you're talking about. Certainly, if we were coming in to change the size of the parking lot, change the existing parking, change the structure, the fencing, the lighting. Anything that would require site plan approval. To your point, and if they uh, do come back in the future to expand the parking, uh, lighting, anything like that, a site plan would require. But keep the same operation going, just with a change in ownership. I don't believe would require a site plan, and I don't think the regulations or the state statute require it. Yeah, no, that site plan hasn't been reviewed for let's say I don't know 24, 24, 34, 30 some odd years. If that site plan is 30 some odd years old, I, as uh, Lenny, uh, as Mr. Tubbs indicated, uh, most all of our applications for location approval do come with a site plan, especially if they're 30 years old, because the site plan that was originally there may not be appropriate for the site plan. I mean, for what's 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 there today. And then it's a non-conforming use. It was something that's been existed right but i mean it, it, if it's a non-conforming use i guess 
taking a look at the site plan would tell us whether it's not conforming or not. And if it's a not conforming use, how can we approve the location approval if it's not conforming to the because the zoning regulations don't apply in this type of a hearing. Commission's uh, board's purpose is to decide whether uh, use is appropriate. Not to how can how sell because it's been appropriate because it's been appropriate for over 30 years. You know, it was approved then. There's nothing changing in the operation other than who the owner is. Much like in a non-conforming, it didn't matter. To be honest with you, yes, I'm trying to figure out why on these plans here we don't have parking because that that's been in part of of uh, the site plan approval since as long as I know, and I can go back to at least 1985 with with having done them. That I believe that was the. Uh... The existing map showing location of the building mm -hmm. is. This goes back to 1997. Yeah, I I I see one way out of this is 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 a, and I don't know if that's a uh, if that's a workable situ situation or a workable solution is to provide some conditional approval on this thing, uh, assuming that we get a site plan with parking and lighting and so on and so forth so that we know exactly what the hell we're approving. No, I disagree with that. Tony. You disagree with it? I wholeheartedly disagree with it. Well, if it's, I, I don't like, I don't like approving anything without having all our, our documentation in place before. I guess my point is the documentation necessary is just that there'll be no change in the existing use, which had been approved. And if we don't I'd approve, I'd, I'd agree with you 100%. I think if we're going to make improvements, change the location of the building, change the layout, that would require a site plan. Well, what is the site plan? What is the site plan? Yeah. The site plan is basically a, a sketch that would show the uh, drawing that would show uh, the existing parking. They're usually drawn to scale. You have the building, the height, the elevations. Not, right. It's changing. Yeah, I, I, well, I know, but this, this I, is. I believe. I believe part of this requires us to use motor vehicle, and approve. And, and, and we're supposed to know where to, the oil waste waste oil is supposed to handle and all that stuff. I, I believe that's something that motor vehicle department. It's just for is the location suitable? Our argument is mm -hmm. it's been suitable for over thirty years. Ask that it continue. Just under new ownership, property being cleaned up. Okay. Thank you. Any additional comments, staff? So, Chris Edge right now is he's going to go look at the uh, building department file to see if we have another site plan on record. I'm looking through the land records to see for past approvals or past. You know, Notice of the decision. Um, so I would recommend, for the sake of gathering that information, you not close the public hearing on that item just yet. Okay. Every single one of these that we've approved in the past they've all had site plans. 18 years that I've been on this board have all had site plans. And we've done several. Oh, well, they've had, they've all had, uh, they've all identified the number of parking spaces. Like, let me say that. They've identified parking spaces. They've identified the dumpster. Yeah, how many cars? They've identified the, uh, how many cars were for sale? How many cars were for repair? So they identified all that in their location approval applications, and 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 he's correct because that's what that's what we had we've had over the last 20, 25 years. We never had an application that maybe it's because this is so old that it's been that we don't have a a, a site plan that is conforming to what we're trying to look at. 1985, we needed site plans with all our parking spaces on. In 1985. So uh, this site plan doesn't really have anything on it, to tell you the truth. No, this is just the sketch of the property where the building is.
um, Dylan, to, in order to expedite this, should we just uh, hold this and then go on to the next table? Let's go to the next one. Table it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, well, this is the uh, this is the, the the hearing part of it. So anybody can speak whenever whenever they want. And my name is William Pisano. I live at one thirty six Middletown Road. Um, these gentlemen are looking to purchase this property, correct? Right. We know if that property is contaminated in any way, existing from what's been there for thirty five years, and, and does that meet requirements? And and uh, are you guys putting yourself at risk with a property that could down the road be a prob problematic for you? No, it's just just my thought, my my concern. It's not my purchase, it's not my business, but something that I, I think I would wanna know. And I do feel that a site plan would be helpful, you know, at this stage, since it's been established 35 years ago, that, you know, that we kind of know what's what and where things uh, belong and where things are. That's all. Thank you. I'll make a motion to table the hearing until Mr. Reg gets back uh, from uh, trying to locate uh, some more information for this hearing. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. White side, aye. <laughs> we have an aye from Ryan. Uh, uh, Corey Whiteside. Corey Whiteside. <clears throat> Okay, I'll move on to the next application. ZBA 2023-06841 Berlin Turnpike, map 10-4, block 158, lot 54, I'm sorry, lot 14. Michael Conlon is requesting a sales of alcoholic beverages location approval for an on-premises liquor permit for Berlin zoning regulation 11B at property owned by Zingarelli Enterprises LLC in the CCD1 zone. Speaking for this application. Thank you, appreciate your time tonight. Uh, again, my name is Michael Conlon. I've been uh, managing over at the uh, Strikers Cafe that's been established there for the last 27 years since uh, February 1st. Uh, Jason Chain, who is a partner of mine, who's been there for 18 years also. Uh, we are not looking to change anything at the establishment currently. Um, all we're doing is just moving from Mark Mashad as a permittee there to myself. Uh, other than that, uh, it's a just little neighborhood bar that's been there could be the last one to pike for, like I said, over 30 years. And we're just looking to get back to getting the establishment going like it used to be and giving back to the community. It used to be a spot where a lot of charity events, fundraisers, things like that came out of. And that's what we're really looking to hopefully do uh, again over the next uh, few months and years to come. Any questions? I'd be happy to answer them. On your application, I noticed that uh, you didn't mark off anything for live entertainment. You didn't say yes or no. I wasn't sure what to do with that. The entertainment license uh, that we have from TNM Billiards, I believe, is for a jukebox uh, that's been going on there for, again, since for 20 something years. Uh, we also have had karaoke and we do have a live band from time to time. Those same entertainment statutes have been going on. If you'd like to mark those few things, or I can mark those right now if you'd like. Uh, other than that, no other entertainment is going to change in any way, make shape or form. Just be the, the local traditional type of things. That's something going, I think we have to address on the application. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. That's see, that's the same thing basically. Yeah, I think it's called yeah. the large bird. Yeah. yeah. The copy of what we got. That's, that's everything I'm saying. Back when they, I, I don't even know that island's there anymore. No, it's not. The highway's been widened since then. Go we'll hang out there. Um, is that form? Is that something you like me to look at now to park? Yeah. No, wait until Dylan. Dylan would have Sorry. to address that. He's our enforcement officer. Did he just uh, excuse himself, or what happened to him? He just ran up for a minute. Oh, yes, yeah, so things uh, again, place has been there for quite some time, and we're just continuing with uh, what Mark had started. And he just got a he's got some health issues, and you know, COVID wasn't kind to, uh, to that establishment. And we're just trying to keep it going. Dylan, Dylan. yeah, I, uh, uh, Commissioner Tubbs had a question regarding uh, any application. This, this, this establishment usually has had bands and live entertainment and stuff like that there uh but on the application he didn't answer yes or no and he's wanting to know with if he can check them off as yes or no now during the meeting um, yeah. i mean all, all it is I, I, I think that's reasonable okay i'm just asking because i want if there's nothing there now it could come back and, and bite everybody later you know, including, including yourself. That's good. No, thank you very much. I, I get, I'm new at this. I'm just getting the signatures from the zoning board so that I can submit the license for the liquor department, the, the state of liquor board, of course, which will take a couple of months to come through. But yeah, yeah I, would, I would just confirm for the record that you intend on having live. Sure. If you'd like to open to that page, right? Like, there's only three things that happens there. One is the jukebox, uh, which we do have the licensing for under T and M again. Uh, the other is uh, karaoke, and I think I don't know if I think that's by itself and uh, uh, like, a, like dance, like live music. Okay, that's it. That would be the only type of entertainment. Jukebox, that would be. no, it's not even there. The jukebox doesn't. Yeah, come under that. No. Or we'll... no, I think uh, I, I think the the license that we heard and have we have two licenses that we paid for uh, regarding music and entertainment, and those licenses reflect karaoke band and jukebox. It's yeah. all under the same. Okay. I, from what I understand. Okay, so we'll, fine. We'll, we'll confirm that on the. Okay. Absolutely. She's got it for the for the minutes anyway. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Any other questions uh, regarding this application from the Zoom members? No. No. Comments in favor of the application? Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, Chris Hedge, 240 Kensington Road. Um, I am Economic Development Director here with the town. Um, I'm actually very pleased to come in support of this. Uh, Strikers has been here for a very long time. Um, and even though it was challenging through COVID, it kind of became lost in the mix. I'm excited for Michael and the other folks to come in, uh, bring some life back to the place and make it more um, Berlin friendly and family friendly, which I think they're looking to do. Um, I know that again, a long history here, the gentleman has some health issues, but I think it's nice to get some new blood in. And I've been working with Michael over the last couple of weeks. I'm excited on the path he's headed and feel support what he's looking to do. Thank you, Chris. Any comments, any additional comments? Comments in opposition? Staff comments? Nothing, okay. I'll make a motion to close the hearing on this application. I'll second it. And a motion made and seconded. Um, Bill, you might take a roll. Uh, Chairman Frank Langia. Aye. Lee Tubbs? Aye. Brian Zellick? Aye. Corey Whiteside. Hi. Okay, it's closed. Okay, going back to uh, application ZBA 2023-05, um, we don't have a a, a parking uh, layout. We don't have anything. We don't have anything on that. I haven't been able to find any other site plan through our records. Um, I, according to the according to the last property card, um, it looks like 
Which American Auto Specialist has owned the property since before before 1992, but on the um, on the assessor card, it doesn't actually give me a date of the original acquisition. This was the map here, or whatever the plot plan we have here, was signed off by uh, back when Joan Joan Ward was town clerk, and that was in 1997. So, not subdivision approved. Recording. Um. I think it would be best to table this for a month, Tony, and bring it back after you have more information because I, I don't feel comfortable voting on it. I'm thinking that even the uh, the property, uh, that's true. No, this is, is a, yeah, this is American North National. I just get somewhere later. Yeah, but uh, I mean, this property, uh, uh, property, uh, the single line for the property card, yeah, the single line, it doesn't have anything on there it's in terms of parking or anything. Yeah. When the property cards property don't. Property cards wouldn't show that. They would they just don't. show the, the footprint of the building itself. Yeah, that's it. And we don't have a, we don't have a, uh, we don't have a site plan for this. I, and, and my guess is that, that it, like I said, we've had site plans for all of our properties. We've had, you know, shown parking, uh, number of vehicles, and so on and so forth. And I think uh, we should probably have that for this property. If we don't have it, um, it may be difficult to get this thing approved. As I already, you know, I, I don't know if we require a vote of four unanimous or it's just, it's just a majority. I believe it's just majority. The majority. Majority. Okay. Well, you know, I'm I'm thinking if this is not if this is approved, fine. If it's not approved, we need to have a site plan to come along with it for approval. And I and I think one of the comments that was made was, you know, whether or not there's any contamination on the property or anything like that. That's I mean, you can buy property with or without contamination, but I mean that's up to you know, buyer beware. In the bank buyer beware. If if there's uh, something wrong with the property or there's contamination. Then you have to kind of be careful about it. Uh, uh, people dump oil down drains. I mean, you know, and if there's a contamination <clears throat> issue there, then then you know it could turn into a, a huge problem. But if that's that's not uh, our that's not our contention. Though. I'm so confused. I don't think the property is under own or under change of ownership here. It's just the dealer license is changing, changing for the operator, isn't it? No, the property is up for sale, Corey. Um, what's the what? Well, that, that's so another we thing too. This, he comes uh, back next month, right? Yeah, he comes back next month. But then another thing. If you deny it, he's got to wait six months. If you deny it with prejudice, he has to wait six months. Okay. If you deny it without prejudice, you could just reapply. Okay. We can table it and have it come back next month, too. I think that's, that's the easiest thing. Take but, this for all of us, in my opinion. I think if the property is being purchased, on top of that, if the property is being purchased, the buyer should know what he's getting. I mean, if the buyer is buying the property and the property based on today's requirements says you know you're only allowed nine parking spaces or something like that then maybe the buyer might have a different uh attitude towards buying the property i mean in other words the buyer should have uh full disclosure uh for what what they're buying and with this particular um diagram over here you're buying a piece of commercial property you don't have full disclosure you got all you're doing is you got a building and you don't even know how many parking places there are. You don't know whether it's contaminated or not. You don't know whether or not you've got a location for actually servicing the cars. I don't know if there's 
a lift inside the building? I mean, that, that's all questions that probably need to get answered before we approve this. And you might be better off getting those questions answered to make sure that you know exactly what you're buying. So, I mean, Corey, the, the, to answer Corey's question. Yeah, you know, I, I see it now. I see it on page two. Um, but I'm also looking on page two where um, the section for the motor vehicle use location, there is a parking required and parking provided column that's not marked off. Oh, it's always been on the on the plans. So my guess is uh, I'm um, I get we I, well we can close the hearing on it, but we have to you know either we well we no we can leave it open. We leave it open and table this. We leave it open and table it. This is I think this is if everybody their in best agreement. interest to. Sure, it's still open. Just to alleviate the concerns about the condition of the property, it's a different entity buying it with some of the same owners, but we're well aware of what should be done and needs to be done regarding uh, phase one, obviously. It's been used as something that could be a generator in a hazardous way. So we're well aware of um, you know, whether Phase two is necessary or not. Take care of that. The ordinary course. Yeah, that's that's the, that's on them and the bank. But you know, again, the lender would require. So. That's on you and the bank. That's and that's, as... that's on a different. Thing. Yeah, yeah. That's alleviate the concern. No, you just. It has nothing to do with us, in approving. It's just that they should know. We think they should know. That's all. If they if they, they weren't aware. Make sure that they're all. protected. That's all. But even in the. The second page, Tony, here it is right here. Number of bays, parking required. Yeah. Parking yeah. required. It's not filled out in the yeah. application. Yeah, the application. Uh, it's on a motor vehicle application. That's on the application you do. Get that's on a variance application. To us for App location application. Location yeah. application. Page, yeah. Second page. Yeah, that's we, we would need that. So I, I'm going to recommend that we go back and, and uh, table this to uh, the uh, May meeting. I think it's in the best interest of that. I'll make a motion to do that, to table it to the May meeting. Um, unless you want us to vote on it. Oh, that, that would be fine. I believe it would be the best course. Okay. All right. Well, we'll do that. We'll table it to the May meeting. Uh, I'll make a motion to do that. I have a second. I'll second it. A motion made and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? If not, uh, can you take a roll, Dylan? Chairman Frank Alenja? Aye. Lenny Tubbs? Aye. Brian Zellick? Aye. Corey Whiteside? Aye. Okay, so that's stable to the May meeting, which is on May. Uh, May give me a help over here. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. May twenty third. Twenty third, right? Okay. Okay. I'll be back on vacation. You be back. Good. I'm back on the twenty second. Look. Okay. Um, old business. Um, DBA twenty twenty three oh dash oh five. 1381 Berlin Turnpike has been tabled till the May 23rd meeting. Uh, ZBA 2023-06 841 Berlin Turnpike, uh, map 10-4, block 158, lot 14. Michael Conlon is requesting a sales of alcoholic beverages location approval for an on-premises liquor permit for Berlin zoning regulation 11B at property owned by Zingarelli Enterprises, LLC in the CCD1 zone. Um, we have a motion to approve this application. I'll make that a motion. We approve this application. I have a second. White side, I'll second. I have a motion made and seconded. Any discussion? If not, uh, Corey, I mean, Dylan, can you take the roll? 
Chairman Frangelangia. Aye. Bunny Tubbs. Aye. Brian Zellick. Aye. Corey Whiteside. Aye. That's approved. Good to go. Thank you. Um, we don't have any minutes from the last month's meeting, so we're going to go back and uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Oh.